AR-15, all right? Right now, he's not he's not vetted to play in the spring game. I don't think he's pra- scheduled or set to practice much in the spring games at all. Yeah. Um, well, he had a little bit of a hammy last year that kind of came and went throughout the year, and then he had some knee surgery. He was considered minor knee surgery uh, in December. That's why he missed the Gasparilla Bowl against UCF. So that's still kind of a, it's still something that's that's a factor right now. Um, I also learned that he had some shoulder injuries back in high school. So it's starting to raise the question, is this going to be an issue moving forward? Is is this going to open the door for the, the Jack Millers and possibly Emory Jones? Some people are saying Emory Jones won't even make it to the spring game. I don't know. I think this, op- again, this opens the door a little bit for those guys that come in. It's a whole new offense. It's a whole new team. It's a whole new coach, right? Anything can happen at this point. At this point. Um, and Muddy said he'll be back in the summer. I, I, I'm i aware of this. But again, getting those first reps, being the first, sometimes being first is better than, um, and not, you know, than being the guy, but not playing, right? So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys roll out. Uh, a big focus that I was lo- re- looking into as well is the O-line this year, right? And they're, with Rob Sale coming in from the Giants, uh, Osiris Torrance, he's a transfer from Louisiana. He was the guy in Louisiana, Right, he's coming in. I think that focus on that O line is going to be huge for any quarterback that steps in. I think what's made it what's made it great for what's been done well for Bama is a solid O line. Right, they've had a solid O line and a solid running back. They've never really had a a killer quarterback. They've had a guy that's kind of come in, he's filled the role, and he's moved on. Outside of Mac Jones here recently, we've talked about this before, they haven't had anybody. So with this new change of focus, it kind of gives me that Bama vibe a little bit. It's like, look, let's put a wall in front of these kids and you let them, and let them work. You put a wall up there, I think you can, it's, hey, who's going to fit now in my in my my scheme a little bit better? I may not need the most athletic. I don't need the guy that's going to make the biggest plays. right? I don't, I don't need a Johnny Manziel. I need, I need somebody who's going to go back there and fill the role. And that's where I think it's going to, that it's people are going to be surprised, and why I said that's that the dark night for me is Jack Miller because it, it, he could come in and just be the guy quickly and fill into that role. And we've got some great running backs coming in. Uh, Montreal Johnson, he's set to get the start right now because again he's a transfer um, from Louisiana. Uh, Billy knows him, uh, uh, Lingard, and I can't think of the guy right now. Those guys are so young. So, but those are also studs. We've got three studs coming in, right? Not not to mention Trevor Etienne. Did I say it right? At the end, yeah, yeah. Yes. Close enough, yeah. Close uh, enough. We'll take it. So we'll with it. all those pieces in mind, I don't think the we're all hyper-focused on the, the the quarterback, but again, if these pieces fall into place like I think he's trying to, it may not be as heavy as a factor as as we think. So the one thing I will say with, with Napier's offense in the past is you typically have one – predominant receiver and a stable of running backs. Mm-hmm. And that's, that just, he, he, he seems to be a guy who, who can find a way to keep a defense on their toes, not sure. their heels on their toes, because you want them coming forward. So your quarterback can go over the top. Now, here's the thing with AR, AR, AR starting to concern me because He's had as many injuries as he had as good games. And we're starting. <laughs> that was good. We're, we're starting to get into that scenario of, look, there's been a lot of great athletes who have, who, who can't just stay on the field. And look, it's not to their detriment. It's it, it, to, to them. They're hurt. And look, at this point, AR has had a shoulder He's had uh, a hammy against Bammy. He's had a knee. He's had, I think, an ankle. The, the guy has had as many injuries as he had flash games. Sure. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. He has come in and shown Lightning some in the bottle things. Sure. But if you can't keep him on the field. What's, it, what's, it, what's, it, what's the value there? Well, yeah, especially if you're going to like start to rely on him in your offensive scheme and if your offensive game plan, and I don't know, right? Sure. Especially for for uh, you know, you know the new coach coming in. Eh, I, I I think th- this is where you and I went back to this a few weeks ago on who we think the starter is going to be, and AR was out there, of course, 
uh, Emory Jones was out there. Miller was out there. And uh, man, I got to be honest, if I'm a coach, do I want to build an entire offense around a guy who can't get past three games healthy? I'm scared. If I'm a new coach, I'm scared of that. Sure. So I don't know. I, it, look, I, I, I love what Billy's doing. Uh, he's got a lot of options. I love what what he's able to 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 maybe put on the field. Maybe like move the quarterbacks around a little bit and sure. and, and put them in in base formations. Um, but I I don't know if he's in, in a position right now, considering the talent he has and a little bit of the 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 maybe sure uh, the the fear he has so of, of of hanging the hat on one. Muddy Muddy made a good point here, and we'll get to Daniel and Waves here in just a second. But he said, at the end of the day, uh, you want accurate, you want the accurate passer or the Cam Newton type of freak of nature with a shaky passing game. Um, do you, he's asking, do you want that? I think since our wide receiver room isn't that deep, and that's another great point, it's mainly going to be a running team. And again, that goes back to my point is you want a guy that's a game manager, right? Your Alex Smith type or your Jimmy Garoppolo who's going to come in and fill the role and fill the need. And again, that's, I think... Him missing the spring game is going to be huge. I know people are kind of overlooking it, but that's look, a lot of that's a lot of lost time. It Every, is that, that, huge. That's practices. That's the game. People don't think about that. Like even we don't we don't have much of a pre- and we're not going to have much of a preseason. We got Utah off the rip, followed by Kentucky. There isn't going to be these typical, uh, you know, just could come over games that we can kind of get away with and you know just try some stuff out. We've got to be ready to rock and roll. And again, he's going to be ready for the summer. I totally get that, but. To get a practice rep game in, it's 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 going to be huge, man. Time flies, so it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's it's something to be to be weary about and to to keep an eye on for sure. And and in a new offense, so not only yep. is he like getting used to being back on the field, sure, he's getting used to being back on the field and reading things that he hasn't been. And live he never to he didn't really have the team last year, so he's just as new as anybody else. I don't feel like he has an edge like we we're, yep. we've we've been talking about. Um, really yep. quick, Wave says, "What's up, boys? How's y'all's night?" Hey, better not you here, Bubba. We're doing great, man. Thank you for stopping by. Um, Daniel Riviera, back at it again with the shit talking. Oh, we absolutely we love go. it. He says Gators are going to lose guy. to Kentucky. Four losses. Utah, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee. Let's easy on the Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're getting a little shit, too, from Ryan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Napier is a good coach, but the SC is different and an animal, and I think the Gators are next Tennessee, to be honest. Wow. I, I think you're crazy, Daniel. I think you're absolutely out of your mind. Nobody will ever be Tennessee but Tennessee. All right, <laughs> you heard it. You heard it here first. Um, it's a Ryan Boyd sport. Uh, I, I thank you. I love that movie. <laughs> it's Billy. Yeah, everyone is now dumber for have listens. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Uh, Greg Schiff, Daniel, you're out of your mind. <laughs> We're getting hot, hot and heady now. Uh, Daniel, y'all one of the best uh, shows on YouTube. Like and subscribe. I know they root for the wrong teams, but that's okay. We forgive them. Thank you, Daniel. We appreciate your love. We love the shit talk too, man. Thanks for stopping by as always. <laughs> um, and what even says, three out of the first four games we rank teams, Utah, Kentucky, and possibly UT. That's what I'm saying. We don't have time to play games. So if we can get a guy that's, that can go in there, manage the game, and hey, let's, we're going to build around a heavy running back team. You know what I mean? We're not going to have your big wide receivers. We got some slot guys control the game, and we'll we'll build build you as a. If you if you look at if you look at all the great Bama teams, that quarterback besides Bryce Young last year, who was obviously the Heisman, which the guy can throw. I, I'm not I'm not sold on Bryce, but the guy can throw a football. The guy's crazy. Mac Jones, his year was pro- progressively got better. If you, I mean, that's something that I attest to. to to Saban, and I mean a lot of college teams do this, but Saban does a great job of that tiered system of using each week by week of getting better. Um, and I think Florida hasn't been on that that train in a while, so I don't know. It's it's no one's been on that train in a while. 